Jane Byrne's great line is, I beat the whole damn system, that she exalted the night that she defeated Michael Balandic after he famously botched the snow removal in Chicago. And I think Jane Byrne was every kind of average Chicagoan littleman who took on the system and won. People loved Jane Byrne, I think, because she, she was a fun person. She liked to have a good time. She liked to party. She created the festival that became a Chicago Fest and became Taste of Chicago. She started to revitalize the ruin of Navy Pier. She was involved with the city. You know, everyone remembers her for living in Cabrini Green and doing all these really sort of edgy things. And she was feisty, she was a gal, okay? I mean, she suffered for that in the sense that people forget the great sexism of the time. And it hurt her if you read her autobiography, which is a wonderful book, uh, My Chicago. You know, she grew up here and she was a devout Catholic and her sister was involved in John F. Kennedy's campaign in 1960 and so she became involved. The Catholics were very proud and uh, so she supported him and then that put her in the realm of, of Mayor Daley. Richard J. Daly, and originally they didn't get along at all. Uh, he, he resented the fact that she went to the Kennedys. There's a famous scene where she first met him at City Hall and, and he said, why did you go to them? Why did you go to the Kennedys? They argued, and because you know, she was a true believer, she was young and spirited, and she was like, well, we put a Catholic in the White House. So she kind of held small posts for Daly in the 60s and, and was a female, which was important in the Democratic Party. Uh, as mayor, she was sort of a disaster. The CTA struck, the teachers struck, the firefighters struck, and off the right order, boom, 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 the first three months, because then as now, the city was broke. She was trying to renegotiate the contracts. So she lost a lot of popularity that way. She lost popularity with African Americans by sort of bungling that, which opened the way for Harold Washington to come in. Although I, I point out always that Harold Washington only beat her because Richard M. Daley, who hated her, I think he hated her because of her relationship with his father. You know, he had all sorts of father issues and Jane Byrne was in there very close to him and he just despised her. And he ran even though they were both gonna lose to Harold Washington, which is exactly what happened. And that was sort of it for her. And uh, the past 25 years has been uh, largely out of uh, the public light. I mean, uh, thank goodness that Mike Sneed had her effort to have her honored in the spring, uh, in the, really the twilight of her life. And so they, they renamed uh, the interchange for her. And so it's good that we gave her some of the honor she's due because she uh, was a pioneer in many ways and also a cautionary tale of what happens to an outsider when you get in power. Once she had power, she didn't know what to do and she ran into the arms of Charlie Swibel and Edward Doliak and all the people the cabal of evil that she supposedly was running against. And so while um, she was a dynamic figure and a beloved figure, she's, there's also a certain sadness to Jane Byrne because she did not become what she had hoped to become. But she was mayor of Chicago, and I think any Chicagoan who lived back then, we all look back on that as a, as a wonderful time to be in the city. You know, they shot Blues Brothers while she was here. And I think if I had to summarize Jane Byrne's administration in one sentence, I would say, it's where Chicago discovered its pride and started to enter into its modern period.